Okay, everyone, uh, so now please join me in welcoming Eric, who is a PhD student at the FU in Amsterdam, and he will talk about ASLR. Please give him a warm round of applause. Hello. Uh, like the Herald said, I'm Eric, a uh, uh, PhD student uh, at the FU in Amsterdam, uh, at the FUSEC group. Uh, and I'll be pre presenting work that we have done uh, in the group today. Oh, uh, uh, but uh, the, the work uh, I'm presenting, uh, most of the work has been done by Ben and Cafe, and by Stefan, who, uh, who showed that the attack that we, I'm presenting is applicable to, um, to uh, 20, all 22 micro CPU micro architectures that he's tested. So, uh, credits to them. Uh, I tried to sneak this slide in all my talks, uh, but uh, this time is especially apt because uh, this talk is about finding them. Um, <coughs> so, this talk is about uh, attacking ASLR. Uh, which is short for uh, uh, address space uh, layout randomization. It's uh, an exploit mitigation technique, which, uh, as far as deployment concerned, is 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 one of the success stories. Uh, uh, since it's, it's been introduced, it's uh, widely been it's been widely adopted, uh, and it makes uh, exploit uh, exploitation uh, somewhat uh, more difficult. Um, the way ASLR uh, makes it more difficult is that it uh, changes the location uh, of code and data uh, usually every time the process is run so that an attacker uh, uh, cannot rely on certain addresses be to be the same uh, all the time. So uh, on uh, modern 64-bit architectures, the, the address space usually is uh, 48 uh, uh, bits, which means there is about, uh, you can address about uh, 256 terabytes of memory. Of course, um, this memory is not, uh, yeah, you cannot write everywhere uh, or read everywhere because your computer probably doesn't have that much memory. So, in reality, m uh, only a very small po portion of the memory is allocated to a process. And uh, so it's e quite easy to uh, change the location of this memory. So, it m uh, makes life for the exploit writer a tiny bit more difficult. Uh, because it's very useful for an, uh, uh, to know the location of data. For example, if you want to overwrite a return address on the stack, then it's nice to know where you can jump to. And of course, you don't, if you don't know, you might jump into nowhere and then the program crashes. However, um, uh, yeah, that not much is needed to, uh, to, to the fourth this mitigation, you just need to leak the location of the memory. Uh, so I really like this background. Um, <coughs> so you, you, you can try to reuse the bug that you can use to exploit to, um, uh, to, to first leak information and then exploit. Or if that's not possible, you'll have to find another bug which allows you to leak this uh, yeah, a location. Or maybe you don't have to. So this presentation is about an attack uh, which uses a, a side channel uh, from JavaScript uh, this, uh, um, on, the, on processes in the hardware itself to discover information about uh, uh, locations of, of data or code in memory. So, uh, the modern CPU architecture 
is a, is a wondrous abstraction uh, layer. Um, uh, uh, um, so even if you, as a programmer, write machine code, there's lots of stuff you don't have to worry about, uh, especially stuff to make, uh, especially stuff to make your uh, um, yeah, your programs fast. Uh, memory accesses are very slow on uh, uh, comp uh, compared to your CPU on modern uh, computers, and uh, that's why there is a cache mechanism uh, cache mechanism built in. So, um, other things uh, are also abstracted away. For example, if uh, your program does a memory access, the data is written to the cache, but uh, where is it written? Your program gives a virtual address uh, 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 to... Uh, gives, a, gives off a virtual address to, um, uh, to the CPU, which then, and the CPU needs to translate that to a physical address, uh, which is done by a, a component called the mem memory management unit. Um, so the memory management unit has a small cache of, of, of mappings from pages to, uh, from, from physical memory to, uh, from virtual memory to physical memory. But if, um, if, if that's not, uh, if, if, if an address is not in the cache, it has to do a page table walk. Uh, um, and uh, the page table walk is what we are uh, going to uh, try to attack. And we'll use, uh, we'll measure the effect that page table walk will have on the uh, uh, L3 cache, the last uh, and biggest cache in the CPU, to, um, uh, to find out what's happening in the uh, during the page table walk, so we're talking about doing uh, a timing attack uh, from JavaScript uh, and to measure whether memory gets accessed. So, uh, which means that we need a pretty good timer to be able to do this. Uh, luckily for us, uh, the browser uh, uh, standards committees have come up with. Uh, an API to just do that. So you can take a timestamp, do an operation, and then take another timestamp, and then you get a very crisp time measurement. Until someone published a paper, uh, which uh, which uh, which showed basically that you can do uh, a, a last level cache attack on the um, uh, and 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 and. Uh, on the CPU and discover some things. So the browser makers made, made the, time, the measurements much more granular. So every microsecond or so, uh, you get a little bump. And then for one microsecond, nothing, uh, nothing changes. Um, but all is not lost for the attacker, because you can now do, yeah, you can turn the f uh, coarse grained uh, timer into a fine grain timer. What you can do, for example, is wait for this bump to happen, and then quickly do an operation, and then start a counter. And then, depending on how, how long the operation takes, you, uh, the counter, uh, bec b yeah, the longer the operation takes, the smaller the, the count uh, be uh, uh, is when the, when, the, when the jump happens. So in Chrome, they chose to vary the vary the length of 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 uh, of the time when the when this happens. So, uh, uh, but still, you can do multiple measurements, and then you take an average, and then you can still get a good measurement. However, we can do better. So, the uh, the browser makers decided. Um, to to make this a bit more difficult, but uh, where the where the uh, where the standards commit uh, when the browser standards committee committee uh, uh, taketh, uh, they also giveth. So uh, they decided to implement uh, 
the, uh, an object called uh, the shared array buffer, uh, which allows uh, multiple threads, which are called web workers uh, in JavaScript, to work on a single piece of memory. And uh, they decided to uh, enable this by default, uh, which is actually uh, after we published the attack. So I don't, yeah, they uh, basically have given up on uh, given up on uh, preventing uh, uh, nanosecond scale time measurements in um, in JavaScript. So. Uh, the shared uh, array buffer can be used for other things, but I'll not talk about it this, this today. Um, so, how how can we using sh how can we measure uh, time using shared memory? Well, it's quite simple. Uh, one thread is used for doing the timer measurement, uh, and the other thread uh, does the operation. And then, so when the uh, when the op thread which does the operation, um, yeah, the, the, the timer thread waits until the threads, thread which does the operation uh, is ready to do the operation, and then uh, it yeah it it sets a, a variable and does uh, starts the operation. Meanwhile, uh, the uh, the counter thread, uh, the timer thread. Uh, sees that, that the shared buffer has changed and will start counting. And then when the operation is done, uh, the, the, um, the, 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 the second thread changes the buffer again. And then um, uh, the counter thread uh, uh, stops. So this gives a very crisp measurement. Uh, so now we have a nanosecond uh, uh, scale timer, uh, and we can do side channel attacks from JavaScript. Um, <coughs> so we'll be uh, doing a timer at uh, attack uh, by uh, on the last level cache, and uh, when the CPU uh, accesses ac accesses memory, everything um, uh, is on the in this. Uh, um, on the granularity of a cache line, and which is 64 bytes. Uh, within, uh, for example, the level three cache, um, a certain physical address maps onto a certain cache set, and this um, this cache set can, uh, for example, uh, on a on a four core desktop Intel machine, uh, uh, contain 16 different cache lines. Um, and I'll uh, I'll talk about uh, uh, a modern Intel machine, but uh, the concept translates to uh, yeah I'll, I'll also to other uh, microarchitectures. So uh, there per core there are uh, two thousand and forty eight cache sets. Uh, which are uh, called a slice, and yeah, so they're on a four-core machine, you have four slices, and these slices are shared among all the cores, but it's just the way Intel has organized their cache. Uh, so uh, to get uh, the cache set ID, so which cache site set within the slice uh, is used, you uh, take the physical address, and then you discard the six bits which uh, are basically uh, telling you which byte within the cache line you use, and then take the 11 bits next, and that is the cache set. So it's basically a round robin mapping of the physical map memory. Uh, the, the cache slice is some complicated uh, hash function, and for this attack, we don't need it, so we're lucky. The important thing to uh, remember is that the cache, if two cache sets uh, cache lines in, f in physical memory map to the same cache set. Uh, they have the same uh, offset. Uh, uh, yes, uh, so th the same physical address if you only uh, only uh, regard the bits which are uh, uh, 
yeah, so, uh, so, so they only regard the lowest bits, so that every one, they there have the same address, modulo 128k kilobytes. So, from which follows that the, they also must have the same address, modulo 4 kilobyte. And which happens to be the size of a memory page, which is uh, the base unit of uh, of memory management on almost all architectures, I guess, in use. Um, so uh, now we know this, uh, we can do a cache side channel attack, and there are multiple multiple attacks possible, and we'll probably use the the most simple one called effect, effect and time. So uh, the code to do the effect and time attack is also quite simple. Uh, you have an effect function which uh, uses a buffer and just uh, accesses cache lines which map into a certain cache set. And we can do, just do that by accessing uh, the cache line which um, at a certain offset of a page which we just we've just seen, and at this point, <coughs> uh, all the cache lines uh, should be uh, filled with um, with our data. So then we proceed to do an operation. We do take a timestamp. We do the, an operation, and we time how long this takes. If this operation needs to do something with a ca uh, with a physical memory. Uh, a, a cache, uh, cache set which maps into this uh, a cache line in physical memory which maps into this cache set, it will take longer because we'll have to do a memory access and the memory accesses are really slow uh, uh, compared to the CPU or uh, uh, cache hits on mo modern computers. So <coughs> this way we, we can see if this operation depends on the physical uh, memory location in which maps into this cache set. So how does this apply uh, to the page table walk, which will attack? Um, so page tables are a mechanism are are the mecha a mechanism for uh, uh, processes to uh, address a really large address space while only uh, having a relatively small amount of uh, physical memory. So it's basically a tree structure with tables at every level which divide up the address space into equal parts. So the first level uh, on Intel, so which is called the fourth level uh, because there are four levels. Well, so um the f um divides address space up t in into uh chunks of five hundred and twelve gigabytes the next uh level which so there could be five hundred and twelve entries but i don't ha there don't have to be uh, d divide uh the address space into one gigabyte chunks then in two uh, megabyte chunks, and then lastly into four kilobyte chunks, which is the granularity of a page. So all, each entry in there points to a memory page, a physical memory page. So uh, what the page uh, table walk process does is it takes the address and will look at this, will uh, use this, uh, will use uh, a binary representation of this address because that's uh, easier uh, makes it easier to show the process uh, where all uh, where the one bits are black and the uh, 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 white bits are zero. So say there is a TLB miss, so we'll have to do the page table walk. Uh, now there is a special register in the CPU which points to the the um the the the, the first uh, page table then the page table uh the the hardware looks at the 
the nine most significant bits in the address and then uses that as uh, an index pointer into the table. Then it does the same with the next level and with the next level and with the f next level up until the level where we know the actual page and then the 12 bits uh, at the end will be used to point into this page. So this is a 4K page, but, uh, and, and so we, we can use this page to do a side channel attack, but what we, uh, but the observation is that the other, uh, the, the page tables themselves are also page, uh, pages. So, uh, yeah, each of, each of them are uh, pages, and so we can also do a side channel attack on these, pa these pages. Um, so let's take a look of, of what we uh, can discover this way. So we can find out that a certain page uh, uh, gets a hit. Now there are eight uh, possible entries which would cause this hit. So we don't know that much, but uh, uh, so so of all, my, but if we look at these pages, we can see that six bits are the same. So we can we now know that there is a sequence of six bits in this address that has this value uh, that we discovered by doing the cache timing side channel. Now there are four levels uh, of pages, and there is a final uh, location into the page. So we get five cache colors. We assume we uh, know the the last level, uh, the, the 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 last uh, location inside the page because that's in practice pretty easy to uh, reverse engineer. And even if you can't, uh, there are uh, other side channels to find this out. In fact, we use this final location to do the side channel attack on all the other locations. Um, so, or actually, we 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 try to uh, yeah uh, uh, try to not get in the in the way. So now uh, we have found uh, four cache lines, which may be used for the page table walk. So. Uh, we can s we can s see that there are four chunks of three bits that we know nothing about, and we, what we also don't know is which cache line, uh, which cache line uh, is used for which level of page table. So that would uh, give us about 16.6 .6 bits of entropy left. So. That's not a whole, uh, lot that we have gained. We, we still need to find 16 bits. However, there is kind of a trick. So we have a technique called sliding, where we allocate a large enough buffer, and then we uh, just probe pages uh, uh, one after a time. So we just add, add, yeah, try the next page, try the next page, try the next page. So it looks a bit like this. So for the last level cache uh, uh, page table. We just uh, try the next page, the next page, the next page, and then when it switches, we know, okay, this, this was a page uh, a cache line boundary. So the next, for the next page, we know that uh, <coughs> the lowest bits of this entry are all zero because it's just went over the boundary. Um, this technique we can also do for the the second level page tables, uh, this time we add two megabytes, two megabytes, two megabytes, two megabytes. Still not that uh, that problematic to do from JavaScript. And then we get the the whole uh, yeah the whole second level page table entry. So how much um, uh, entropy is left? So well, we have got two chunks of three bits, and we don't know which uh, uh, page table 
uh, which cache, cache line um, belongs to which page table uh, level. So we are left with seven bits. And this is, so I think for this, um, there's not a lot to do ab uh, about this if we want to have uh, good timers in JavaScript. But we can actually do more because in practice, <coughs> Stuff, stuff doesn't, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. In practice, stuff uh, isn't optimal. So, yeah. So, actually, nowadays we we're starting to be able to allocate one gigabyte uh, uh, allocations in JavaScript, which is probably because you want to run a real tournament in there or something. Um, but then the, for the last level, it's it's kind of too much, uh, 512 gigabytes allocations, and then you might be, uh, have to do that up to, all, up, to, up to eight times, so maybe not. However, um, uh, actually, uh, uh, for example, on Fi uh, for Firefox on Linux, um, if you allocate a certain type of object um, called an array buffer, um, Firefox doesn't initialize the memory. Uh, and it just asks the kernel for the memory and then just leaves it there. And what the Linux kernel does is it doesn't initialize it and so it doesn't have to map in pages in the page table structure. So it just, uh, and it doesn't use up any memory as long as you don't touch it. And we don't have to touch it. We just have to go over and touch one page or a few, uh, one page at the very end. So uh, this seem to, seems to, uh, yeah. So actually, on Linux, you can, it turns out you can allocate huge chunks of uh, virtual memory. Um, and actually, uh, within, uh, uh, yeah, seconds, two minutes, you can uh, calculate the whole. Uh, you can you can uh, basically do the sliding attack and flip uh, flip flip the cache line on the uh, the highest level page table. In Chrome, uh, uh, Chrome does initialize memory, uh, which is uh, a bit unfortunate for us. But um, uh, but uh, what it does is uh, it divides memory up into up in heaps, and when the heap is full, or it decides, okay, I'll maybe for security reasons, I'll need to create a new one. It just uh, to increase uh, ASLR. Uh, actually, it it tries to allocate a huge. Uh, well, it it tries to leave a huge gap between the previous heap and the new heap, which means we can <coughs> move forward quickly in the address space. So um, using this m method of creating new heaps, or uh, we can uh, we can uh, recover the third level address bits, <coughs> which would leave us with three bits of entropy left. And on Windows one or zero, I am not sure. Um, and uh, uh, but um, so, uh, but doing the attack on the fourth level would 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 take a lot of time, and maybe the person uh, 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 because because uh, Chrome needs to initialize and free lots of memory, and it just takes time, and your laptop gets hot. So maybe the user will click away, and uh, no ASLR for you, uh, recovery for you. So uh, this attack. Uh, was implemented on a Skylake machine, but uh, uh, has been verified that it works uh, on the 22 machines by uh, testing the the side channel in a on a native C uh, with a native C program. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> so time uh, for a demo video. So. Oh. 
So here we have obviously the browser. So these <coughs> uh, th these bits are the raw measurements, and what you see here are signals uh, detected by an, uh, a solver, which would which kind of try to tries to find the 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 most likely uh, the most likely values uh, for the attack. So. Looks really pretty, matrix style. So. And then, yeah, the solvers try to get confidence on what they're me measuring up to a certain point, and then they decide, okay, it's clear. And then, uh, 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 attaching GDB to verify the address, we can see that the address. <coughs> is a location of memory that we know uh, and uh, because uh, and because of that we left left the marker there so that's uh So, yeah. So, uh, in conclusion, it's uh, possible to do, to recover quite a lot of uh, uh, address information from JavaScript using a hardware side channel alone uh, on the memory management unit. And uh, apparently, browser vendors have given up on this or any other uh, uh, side channel attacks because you can't have uh, you, you you can't have um, uh, Multi-processing with shared memory uh, uh, without this, and apparently uh, that's the way uh, the direction we're going. So yeah, any questions? As always, please line up at the microphones. Uh, we'll start with number one, please. Yes, uh, have you looked at actual browser bugs and uh, looked at how many are exploitable with just a single leaked pointer? I mean, usually you need at least two. You need a code pointer and some, somewhere to, to write to actually gain a control over the execution flow. So in, in our attack, uh, we um, also have a, a way to leak a code pointer. So uh, we first leak a data pointer and then we create, create uh, lots of uh, JavaScript pages, uh, JIT, uh, Java, JIT at JavaScript uh, code, and then we, um, uh, yeah, so so leaking the um, these most significant pages is really hard to uh, to do for code, but the the last level, the, the, so the the ones, uh, for, yeah, the, the page tables which are, um, yeah, which uh, point to the actual pages and the, uh, I think also the levels, the the level one level above, is actually pretty easy to well easy, it's to do it's doable to to leak using this technique. Could we get mic number four, please? Uh, so you just criticized the uh, browser uh, creators for the, um, well, not trying to mitigate all these security issues. Uh, what would you, as, uh, as an ASLR hacker, recommend the browsers to do? What are the measures they could take that they have not yet taken? So, um, yeah, so there's also a discussion of whether ASLR, uh, whether yeah, so, so one one of the things that make uh, make this attack quite easy is that uh, browser makers have have tried to prevent against another problem called uh, use after free vulnerabilities by allocating more memory every in a different region every time because if you can 
free memory and then uh, allocate yeah, if you allocate something else and then the a bug in the browser will use it as if it were the old uh, uh, old object for example uh, then you can do usually can do quite bad stuff so I guess so, so, so yeah so you can think of mitigations against this technique but they might work against uh, the mitigations against use of after free so the question also becomes uh, do we uh, yeah so, so is, is it still worth it um, so yeah uh, also because uh, 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 there are only seven bits that are not inherent to the architecture so yeah the question is in a, an environment where you can run JavaScript is it is ASLR uh, yeah it might help a bit and sure uh, Ben and Kave uh, spend lots of hours on implementing this so an exploit writer might uh, yeah uh, yeah, it, it will still be extra effort if there's no easier way, but uh, yeah, the question, yeah, I th yeah, I'm not sure. The <laughs> Could we get a question from the internet, please? Given that ASLR is only meant to help protect against remote attacks, uh, how useful is your approach when an attacker cannot exercise the MMU? So the attacker would always exercise the MMU, but I guess uh, uh, choosing the location is, is uh, harder. And, um, uh, <coughs> And the timing is, of course, over the network way more difficult. So I don't really, yeah. So, but the thing is that ASLR is used for local attacks and this, uh, uh, against local attackers. And this shows that it's, uh, that, that are inherently inside the architecture problems with this and that it's not that useful, apparently. Can we get mic number one, please? So, um, recently I saw a vulnerability by the um, security researcher Loki Hard, which was for iOS. And in your presentation, I saw, of course, the Apple Cortex, um, sorry, the Samsung Cortex A7, which is the iPhone 5's processor. Um, what I'm wondering is if I create an array in JavaScript containing my shell code, um, am I able to, with this attack, to get the address of that specific array, or is that impossible? So, <clears throat> um, so, so, uh, so usually, I guess, shell code itself uh, won't be executable in an array, but, so, so, you will get location of memory that you control completely, if that's what you... Uh okay, that, that's actually what I meant. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, is there a PUC available, or uh, is this kept closed source? And I th don't think... Uh, we usually don't release the uh, attack uh, uh, code. We do describe... Uh, we have descri we described it in the paper, so... Uh, uh, it, it's uh, yeah. Uh, it should be reproducible using the paper. Right. Thank you. Okay. And we'll just stay at mic and one. I didn't get uh, the graphic you showed us uh, in JavaScript. What were the colors and what were you trying to say there in the y and x axis? Uh, that's. Can you say stop or? <laughs> in your video, for example, or? Oh, oh yeah, so, um, <clears throat> so I, I'm not completely sure uh, about, uh, about, about the first one, might be raw measurements. The, the second one uh, is, are, are, are the, the four, I think. Well, are, are the 
the page tables that uh, that that we try to uh, the, the 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 lookups that we try to find. So, yeah. So you. Yeah. Okay. And more from Mike, Mike One, please. Hello. Um, I was just wondering if you guys actually uh, tested this technique on uh, public clouds or any, any multi-tenant uh, architecture. Uh, so this attack is uh, uh, within the browser, so uh, yeah, we, we tested it as if it were uh, a client, a browser client. I mean, uh, like, I, I would like to continue, actually, if, if, the, if it's okay. We have a lot of time. Ah, all right. So, uh, I was, uh, actually, I read a couple of things about this. Uh, my question was not really specifically about the ASLR, but uh, more like how, how could be, like, the mitigation techniques for, uh, like, public cloud where each tenant has the right access to the cache line and how uh, is that, do you think, the possible to, the, to disclose the, the cache line? So yeah, there, there there have been quite a few attacks uh, using uh, uh, yeah using this technique from uh, uh, also just natively like you would do in a uh, in a uh, VPN environment, for example. Uh, it's the guy. VPS environment. Oh, sorry. You're on. So there is a browser plugin from some uh, researchers at TU Graz uh, called JavaScript Zero, which aims to provide mitigation against uh, side channel attacks from JavaScript. Uh, have, have you heard of it? And if so, have you uh, tried if it provides um, pr uh, protection against the attacks you showed? So I think, um, yeah, so I haven't tried it, but uh, what I described, I would say uh, it would uh, provide protection because it uh, uh, it it allows you to disable um, d disable stuff you don't want among which which the shared array buffer. Um, so the, the so uh, so so in principle the shared array buffer wasn't here before this year anyhow, and uh, so so I doubt lots of public code makes use of it. Um, so, so I think it's easy to uh, to disable stuff you don't want. There's so JavaScript; they're basically adding stuff all the time. Uh, so to make it suitable for for gaming and uh, all kinds of sensors that you want, and uh, so and most code doesn't make use of it. For example, I I rare, I only use JavaScript on my in my browser when uh, the page doesn't load without, but uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm all for disabling lots of stuff that we don't need, but uh, it, the, the direction of the browser seems to go the other direction. So uh, I guess we'll see uh, how it will turn out in the end. So. Okay. Do we have any more questions? No? Then please thank our speaker again.